Welcome to the Sex and Astrology Podcast. I'm Brandy Joy. I'm your host. And we are talking 2024 horoscopes. And right now we're going to talk about Scorpio. So if you're a Scorpio, whether you have a Scorpio rising, a Scorpio sun, or a Scorpio moon, it really doesn't matter because this will have some application to your life journey this year. All right, so Scorpio, especially if you're a Scorpio rising, this would be the most accurate. Um, But Scorpios, um, we have Pluto going into your fourth house this year. So um, Pluto, it takes about 20 years to transit a sign, right? And it's going into Aquarius on January 20th of 2024, which means it's going into your fourth house of home and family. And also your like inner child, your inner emotions and stuff like that. So Pluto going into Aquarius, it means that it is leaving your third house. Um, That's been going on since 2008. And the third house has to do with learning new skills, um, being a better communicator, um, also uh, siblings and neighborhoods and short-term travel. So you've had Pluto going through your third house since 2008, and now it's going into your fourth house of home and family. Uh, So um, this will be a time over these next 20 years from 2024 to about 2044, where Pluto's influence will be about your emotional renewal. And also um, it could be about just attachments to family, um, to home. It it can be about like uh, going through endings and beginnings in those areas it can really uh, trigger a lot of transformations in your family dynamics. And it could be related to things like power struggles in the family, intense emotions and emotional trauma or healing. Um, So anything that needs to be released in terms of your family patterns um, that no longer serve you or your family are going to come up. Um, The fourth house also represents your home. So beyond the family, it's also home. So this could be a restructuring of your home environment. It could be about your residence and like renovations or, you know, changes in your house and, and or even your location. Um, it could be over these next 20 years that uh, maybe you decide you want to travel and you don't want to be at home as much. Um, so anything related to home uh, could be a transformative time for the next 20 years for you. And uh, also just connection with your family structure. So maybe you're going to get more into the deepening of emotional connections within your family, or it could be um, that you're just going to go through some type of healing journey in that area. Uh, So yeah, uh, it's anything to do with the, you know, emotional healing, um, family healing and uh, home life kind of stuff over the next 20 years. And a lot of times we have to face our fears and our shadows when Pluto goes through that house, whatever house it goes through, like will make you kind of work with that. So if you're thinking about doing some deep emotional cleansing, this would be a good time to start doing that. Um, working on emotional release work. Like I love Tantra for emotional release work. It's something that I teach. I do workshops and retreats on that and stuff. And uh, that can be very, very detoxifying and very just liberating. It's wonderful. That's what Tantra means is liberation. So Tantric yoga, though, um, it clears out the lower chakra system. So that's what you're going to be dealing with over these next 20 years is the attachments and the, the lower chakras, which are the emotional chakras, that part of you that is like the deep psychological stuff, the shadow work and all of that. So you're going to be going through an intense journey over the next 20 years of emotional cleansing and healing. And uh, yeah, working with um, home and family stuff a lot. So anyways, let's move on to your next teacher, (laughs) Saturn. Um, So Saturn is the teacher of the Zodiac. Saturn will be in your fifth house Wow, it'll be in your fifth house this year. It's already entered in March of 2023, and it will be there until May of 2025. And so your fifth house has to do with um, your creativity, uh, your romantic life, and self-expression. So this is like the area where you express and create. So it also has to do with children as well. 
So when Saturn goes through a house, it teaches you, it gives you tests and challenges in that area. And so Saturn's influence in your fifth this year and the past almost year, it's been teaching you probably about um, maybe refining an artistic skill. Um, it's the house of joy and pleasure. So it's having you kind of become more structured and disciplined or refining that area of your life. So maybe uh, focusing a little bit more on, um, you know, serious romantic commitments instead of just you know, having fun with them even. Uh, so it could lead to more of a committed type of relationship. If that's what you want, if you're already in one, it could be about, um, you know, you kind of reevaluating what you want romantically in that relationship or even sexually, because the fifth house, when it has to do with romantic relationships, of course, sex is involved, but it's sex, you know, fun and, and enjoyment and, uh, you know, connection in a fun way and expressing yourself. So it's more about you having fun and expressing yourself um, rather than there's another house where they talk, we talk more about like the more deep emotional stuff, whereas this is more fun. So it could be that um, you, you do get a little bit more serious about your romantic life um, and you figure out what you want. And it could be that you seek out some more stability and long-term commitment in your love life. Um, and that could make you kind of reassess your romantic priorities and values. So some lessons have probably been coming up for you in this area. And if you are a parent, um, this can make you kind of work on the discipline and structuring of, of you being a parent. Uh, there may be a focus on creating more discipline with your children, emphasizing more, maybe, you know, moral or character development with them or connection or education. Or it can even be, um, you know, that you commit to having children or um, that you uh, commit to not having children. Uh, either way, this is the house of children. So that might be um, something that comes up for you this year or even last year or the coming year. Um, but it's a theme, right? Anything that you create, right? And children, is some, they're, they're something that you create and that you have fun with and their joy and stuff like that. Um, also... The fifth house is associated with uh, fun and hobbies, so it could help you to establish a little bit more structure and and become more disciplined in your hobbies even. Um, so let's say that you are in martial arts or dance or, you know, whatever kind of hobby you might have, gaming, and uh, you really want to get good at it. And so it can make you actually become more structured and disciplined um, so that you do develop that skill a little bit more, that fun hobby skill a little bit more. Maybe you do art, you know, whatever it might be. And uh, yeah, it's, it's the house of creativity. So it's a good time to overcome creative blocks. Um, and you might have some creative blocks during Saturn transit. So you might have to face those, those limitations and those blocks and uh, develop more of a disciplined approach and more structure in that area and uh, learn some things about it. Because Again, Saturn is the teacher. All right, so let's move on to the eclipses. So the eclipses, um, they happen in two seasons a year, right? Usually we have two eclipse seasons, and we just had one eclipse season in October of this past year in 2023. And now we're going to have another one come up in March and April. <clears throat> so the one that happened in October, October 14th of 2023, that was in Libra. So it was in your 12th house. Okay. So that eclipse that happened in October, I want you to go back to October and think, you know, what was the theme of October? What was happening to me in October? And um, this was a new moon solar eclipse in Libra at 21 degrees in October. So this is in your 12th house. So when an eclipse happens in the 12th house, it brings about like a lot of change and illumination in terms of spirituality and hidden aspects of the self, your unconscious. All right. So when, when the eclipse hits you in October, go back to that and think, okay, was there anything spiritual, like any spiritual stuff happened to me or awakenings in that area? Or was it like that I found out secrets or hidden things? Um, you know, what happened to me in October? Because that theme is going to come back up at the end of March and in April. 
Um, you might have some a heightened connection to your unconscious mind. Uh, going into trance might be easier for you. Um, it could be that all of a sudden, like the eclipse, like brings you some crazy dreams that have a lot of meaning for you. Um, uh, you could go through a, a time of like releasing some unconscious patterns, some imprints that are kind of stuck in your mind that you need to clear out because eclipses, they are like, when they hit, they transform, they illuminate, they kind of go, Hey, this is what you need to know. Realizations and stuff happen. And, um, you know, this can help you to confront and release limiting beliefs, fears, unresolved issues that have met, maybe been in your unconscious that you're not dealing with. And it's also, you know, very much about your spirituality and dreams and psychic experiences and intuition. So I always tell everybody when they have something going on with the 12th house, you want to do a lot of meditation work. You want to go into trance as much as possible because this is going to be a time when that is going to be so important for you. That is going to be the time where now things are going to come through so much easier for you to kind of get connected to your higher self and go through awakening and everything. So it's like an intuitive awakening time when the eclipse hits your 12th house. And um, you could have a lot of psychic experiences. Um, you could develop a better connection with your high self. And uh, it could also, you know, just lead to more of a conscious awareness of of your own inner workings. So it's going to, you know, that's going to be your next chapter coming up. It started in October of 2023. And now again, in March, it'll be March 25th of 2024. Uh, we'll have a Libra eclipse at five degrees. And that will be in your 12th house again, right? So it'll be like the next chapter of whatever was started in October. And then on April 8th, we're going to have another eclipse and that one will be in Aries at 19 degrees. And that'll be a new moon solar eclipse happening in your sixth house. And this will be about new beginnings in your sixth house because on April 8th in Aries, this eclipse will be hitting your sixth house, which has to do with like work, health, um, daily routines, habits, um, service to others. Okay. So here are some things that you could possibly notice, right? In terms of, uh, you know, some illuminations and realizations, challenges, things that come up for you. You could have some health crisis possibly um, happen when we have an eclipse in this house. It can make you focus on your health and your wellness. Um, it could be mental health or physical health. It could also be that um, it triggers some changes in your work life and your career because your sixth house has to do with your work life, your day-to-day -day living and could involve like job opportunities or shifts in your responsibilities at work, uh, reevaluation of what your goals are in your profession. Also um, your daily routines, right? Your habits, your schedules, um, those things could be illuminated for you to make shifts if you need to, uh, especially if you are stressed, if you are stressed in your day-to-day -day routine or your work life and stuff, that will definitely come to a head for you during an eclipse season. So just be aware of that. And finally, uh, service to others is another important one. So you might all of a sudden have like a calling to, uh, you know, do volunteer work or um, to help people more in your career. Um, it could be that you are a healer, somebody in the, the healing or service path. And so that just becomes illuminated in some way. But it may really just increase the awareness of your work-life balance, right? So we all get a little bit too caught up in work sometimes. And so that might be a focus is like getting that balance under control, your work and your personal life balance. <clears throat> and then finally on, uh, we have, you know, after that happens in uh, March and April, we'll have the other eclipse season come in September and October of 2024. And so on September 17th, we're going to have an eclipse in Pisces at 25 degrees, and this will be in your fifth house, and it will be a full moon eclipse in your fifth house. <laughs> All about those relationships, right? So when an eclipse happens in your fifth house, it brings about like changes and shifts in your, you know, realizations in your area of romance, dating, creativity, 
expression and even your children's life. Okay. Um, so there could be uh, an illumination, right? You have Saturn going through there, right? There could be an illumination of, um, you know, renewal in your creative endeavors, uh, more inspiration all of a sudden, a surge of new ideas or artistic projects might happen. Um, you might realize a passion that you didn't know about before. So the eclipse is all about like, you know, just like illumination and realizations and changes and shifts. So it could be a new beginning or a new ending for you in terms of your romantic life. Um, there could be a shift in your romantic relationships. Um, you could go through some personal growth there, some realizations. Um, it also could be uh, that, you know, you decide or you want to explore um, more about, you know, your children or having children. It could be a change in your fi family dynamics um, with relationship with your children in some way. Maybe they go off to college or, um, you know, maybe you end up living together again or something like that might happen. And uh, finally, um, you know, uh, we have an October 2nd eclipse in Libra, four degrees, and this will be a new moon eclipse in your 12th house. So another chapter will happen in your 12th house of spirit. So just be aware that uh, October 2nd, you'll have an eclipse in your 12th house again. So remember last year, October 2023, you had that 12th house eclipse. And then in March, you'll have another one. And then again, in October of 2024. Um, so each one will bring a new chapter to that area of your life. All right. So finally, I want to talk about Mars retrograde happening. And uh, that's a little bit more of a negative, but then we'll get into um, something positive here at the end. So on December 6th, at the end of the year, we're going to have Mars retrograding until February 23rd of 2025. So from December 6th to February 23rd, Mars retrograding, and that will be in your ninth and 10th house. So this is in the signs Cancer and Leo. When Mars retrogrades, it causes people to be a little bit more agitated and reactive, um, especially in the area where it's going to be going through your chart. So for you, it's going to be going through your 10th house of career and public image reputation. Um, so it could influence your, uh, the Mars retrograde could make you a little bit more agitated at work or, you know, working too much and feeling stressed and agitated. You want to be careful with that. You don't want to usually get into conflict during a Mars retrograde if you can avoid it because Mars re retrograde will cause people to prolong conflicts because the retrograde happens for a few months. And so you might think, oh, you know, this is just going to be like, you know, a quick issue. And then it becomes like this big blown up ordeal. So just be aware of that. And this will be in your house of career and social reputation and public image. Um, so it could, you know, even filter into your personal relationships and business partnerships quite a bit. So be aware of that and um, that agitation at Mars retrograde. And then uh, it will also be going through your ninth house. And so that, you know, is, it could be that you're reassessing your philosophy in life, like what you believe and your ideologies and stuff. And you might like kind of go within and um, start really reevaluating things and what you believe. And also it could encourage educational pursuits as well, especially higher education because ninth house rules, higher education. Um, you might start reconsidering like academic goals or courses of study, um, you know, seeing if like these types of things align with your life path and kind of reevaluating those things as it retrogrades because Mars is like ambition and it has to do with like you using your power and doing what you want to do and going forward. And so when it's in a house, like the ninth house, it's like it's, you start reflecting in that area a lot. Um, <clears throat> it can also create delays though. So just be aware of that. And that's the house of travel. So Mars retrograde can introduce like delays and obstacles in your travel plans and there might be some disruption in your traveling or a reevaluation of like the timing of a traveling plan that you have or something like that. Uh, so anyways, um, it can also bring up legal matters and uh, a reevaluation of legal issues. 
And so um, it could involve ongoing legal cases that you might have or contracts or decisions related to, you know, the legal area and, you know, your world. So um, hopefully, though, it won't be like a bad thing. It will be more like a closer examination of the details and stuff. All right. So let's move on to the positive aspects. So um, in August, well, in 2023, in August 28th, 2023, we had um, Uranus turn retrograde. All right. So Uranus has been in Taurus for about five years. It'll be there for a couple more years. And Uranus is like revelations and shocks and and sudden changes and opportunities and things like that. It's just like shifts, right? It's very electrical Uranus. <laughs> That's how we, we kind of look at it. Um, so Uranus has been there for about five years in your seventh house. And so you've probably been having a lot of uh, shifts in your life in your seventh house. Um, and that can be, you know, that <clears throat> you've gone through a lot of relationships right now lately, or um, maybe, you know, the dynamics of your relationship have shifted. Maybe you're realizing things about your partner if you're in a relationship that you didn't realize before over these past few years. Um, you know, you could go through a divorce or, you know, all of a sudden something could happen and you go through um, like a you meet somebody new. I mean, you just never know. Like Uranus is, is a wild card in a lot of ways. And that's been going through your seventh house relationships. Now, August 28th of 2023, it went retrograde. And it'll end that retrograde. It'll finally complete it January 27th, 2024, this month, thankfully. Because in your house of relationships, when Uranus is retrograding, it kind of makes you feel stuck in that area. It's like it was changing and shifting before, and now it's kind of stuck. <laughs> and now it's finally going to move direct. And so it should lighten up that area of your chart, thankfully. Um. Now, Jupiter is also going through your seventh house. So you have Uranus, which like, you know, creates all these changes and sudden developments and stuff and sudden changes and shifts and shocks. But then you have Jupiter, which expands things and creates luck and opportunities. And so from May 16th of 2023 until May 25th of 2024, Jupiter is in Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus, right? So you have two of these energies that are creating these like unexpected developments, unexpected opportunities. But come April, April of 2024, that month, Jupiter and Uranus are going to join together. And when they get really close, that's going to really speed everything up in that seventh house for you, that relationship area. Um, it brings like a, an expansive kind of energy to the realm of relationships and collaborations so this has to do with your business partnerships, your marriages, your long-term partnerships. You could have um, unexpected, exciting relationship opportunities. Um, you, you know, it could it could be business again. It could be romantic. You know, partners, and also it it will you know give you the opportunity to maybe explore something different than you have in the past, like unconventional approaches in your relationships. And it could be that um, maybe you seek out more freedom in your relationships. So there's a lot of different things that could happen. It's a bit unpredictable, but um, usually it's just like, you know, opportunities and luck and an expansion in that area. It's not usually a bad thing. I mean, it could be. I mean, if you look at it that way, like, for instance, I remember, I think it was Jupiter was going through a, a friend of mine's uh, seventh house years ago and... <clears throat> She ended up going through a divorce and you would think, oh, wow, why would the planet of luck and opportunity make you go through a divorce? That's a bad thing, right? But no, I mean, divorce can be a good thing if it's a bad relationship. So you see, <laughs> you could see it as, oh, it's a bad thing sometimes, but sometimes it's actually a good thing when it comes down to it. But anyways, um, there can be a lot of breakthroughs when you have Jupiter and Uranus together in a house. There are a lot of breakthroughs in that area. So um, hopefully this will be good and you'll have a lot of growth in your relationship house and a lot of expansion, a lot of opportunities there. But um, if you want to learn more about love and intimacy and in uh, astrology, I have a free guide, a free ebook, actually. Uh, you can check it out on my website at brandyjoy.com. You can download it there for free. 
And I hope you'll join me next week for another episode of the Sex and Astrology podcast. So thanks so much for joining me and have a great week.